so much for joining us and taking time out of your evenings, dinners, workouts, meal prep and more to listen in and be part of this webinar. I'm Jazz Shkenbri Stockart, one of the co-founders of Luna, the world's first digital health companion for teens. And I'm delighted to be hosting this evening's event, which is all about how the right resources can boost teen mental health. Now, before we kick off, a quick note to say that this webinar is being recorded and we will be sharing it around afterwards too. So do feel free to share it on to any colleagues or people you know who might have been wanting to join this webinar but were unable to attend. So just as people are joining, um, we would like to do a quick poll um, to know who has joined us today. So hopefully shortly you'll see a poll pop up on Zoom. Um, with a couple of options. So are you a parent, a guardian, a teacher? Are you a teen, charity, or another interested party? So a quick 20 seconds to see who's with us this evening. So on my side, I can see lots of parents in the room, a few teachers, other interested parties. We have got some teenagers on the line as well. So great to see some of the Luna community. We have charities as well. Um, excellent. Great. Um, there should now be a second poll that is popped up on your screen. This one is about how you heard about the webinar. So was that through LinkedIn, a social media ad, school, word of mouth, email or other? So again, just another 20 seconds. So lots of people saying social media, great to know that that's happening. Email, word of mouth, LinkedIn as well. So great to know all the posts are also working and then lots of people saying other too. Excellent. Thank you all so much. So I think we can end that poll now. So before we start sharing insights, I wanted to say a quick word on what Luna is and explain where all these insights are coming from. Luna is the world's first health and wellbeing companion for teenagers. It's an app made for teens by experts to support them throughout adolescence. Luna is the antidote to the misinformation hosted on social media platforms. It's a closed platform with no peer-to-peer -peer interaction, and it's a safe space for teens to learn about things like mental health, body image, skin, periods, relationships, and more. The app in itself has four core components to it. The first is Luna Learns, which has a suite of articles and videos created by experts on all the topics that I mentioned before. There's the Ask Luna feature, which is a space where teenagers can ask anonymous questions and get an expert backed response. The third element is the Luna Tracker, so a space where teens can start to log their periods, their emotions, their moods, and start to understand themselves better and form healthy habits. And then the fourth element and component to Luna is community, not in the sense where they can talk to each other, but in the sense that they can read and see what other people are asking, read the responses from medics, and start to realize that they're not the only ones going through this and that they are in fact very normal. So there are lots of places that teens can go to for support today. And we've spoken to thousands of teens across the country and asked them where they seek help for health and well-being. Is it school? Is it parents? Is it online? Now, whilst it's promising to see so many teens going to parents as a source of support, simultaneously, it is worrying that more than 50% are taking matters into their own hands leaning heavily into friends and online resources like TikTok. My co-founder and I, and potentially many others on this call, come from a generation where there was little to no information about health and wellness. And that's actually the reason why we wanted to create um, a product like Luna. However, after speaking to thousands of teenagers from this generation, 
what we learn is that actually the problem is that today there is an issue with misinformation online. To give you um, a flavor of what we mean by this, um, as we got a surge of questions in about periods and whether it's true that teens shed their skin on their period like a snake every month. Now, for anyone on this call who's wondering whether that is true, trust us, that is not true, but that is very much the reality of how teens, um, of what teens are really seeing today and sometimes the scary advice that they can access online. So our mission, in a nutshell, is to create the most empowered and educated generation when it comes to health and well-being through an app that teens are proud to use and that parents at educational institutions can trust and know is safe. Now, after two years working with teens, we now have a community of 75,000 teenagers across the world using Luna. And from this, we've been able to gain invaluable insights on Gen Alpha that we are very excited to share with you tonight. A quick note on the term Gen Alpha, in case you're wondering, it's the next big generation after Gen Z. They're typically nine to 14 years old. They're digital natives with iPads and laptops in the classroom, and they have phones and very much use social media. So their fingers are on the pulse. This generation really care about societal and env environmental causes. They care a lot about forming their own identity and respecting other identities too. And they are very inclusive. When we first started this app, we did worry that teens might run out of questions to ask us, making our service redundant. But trust us, this has not been the case at all. The teen community keep us on our feet for sure. So for those of you listen, listening in, thank you so much for always asking us questions. Over 36,000 questions have been asked to Luna to date. And the top three categories of questions we've been asked about are periods and hormones, relationships, mental health and well-being. And interestingly, these are all topics that are mandated as part of the national curriculum. You can see a very small sample of some of the questions that we get asked to get a flavour and understand a bit more about what teens want to know more about. Now, not only have we been busy answering questions, but we've also produced over 700 pieces of content with our experts. The most popular topics that teens are engaging with are body image and positivity, confidence and motivation, and skin and skincare. And alongside high volumes of questions engagement, we've received a lot of love and positivity about how Luna has helped them. We know that teens love our product from the vast number of thank you messages and reviews we receive daily. And we are very proud to be one of the first businesses building a product for Gens Alpha that they genuinely want to use and that they love. So what does all of this tell us? Well, from the engagement and uptake we've had from Luna, we've shown that teens are actively looking for digital alternatives that are trusted, accessible and relatable resources to support them through their adolescence journey. It also shows us that the right digital resources can have a real positive impact on teens' lives today. We measured this impact through a wellbeing challenge we launched in our app across the month of February 7,000 teens across the UK took part in a series of challenges across mental health, getting active, sleep, body image, and positivity. And the results really speak for themselves. In just four weeks, we were able to demonstrate tangible improvements across all four areas, exemplifying the positive impact and roles that apps like Luna have on teens today. To call out just a few measurable stats, after four weeks using Luna, 84% of teens reported that their mental health was going well or thriving. This was up from 57%. 81% of teens felt neutral or good about their body image, and this was up from 48%. And 18% experienced perfect sleep after the challenge. This was over a 100% increase. So without me telling you more about the app and telling you more about our insights, 
I'm now really excited to introduce our panelists who will be joining us for what I'm sure is going to be an extremely um, exciting and insightful discussion. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Dr. Katie Malburn. We are so lucky to have Dr. Katie, Luna's Chief Medical Advisor on this webinar with us. Dr. Katie is a consultant pediatrician and the lead for acute children and young people's mental health at Imperial NHS Healthcare Trust. Katie has established new trust-wide services for pediatric rheumatology, gynecology, and adolescent medicine, and she speaks to teens on a daily basis. Now, alongside her day-to-day -day role in medicine, she has also held positions as the safeguarding trustee at the Girls' Day School Trust and established an innovative text messaging service known as Text in the City for Young People in 2007, essentially the text and millennial version of Luna that I would have used. Also introducing Ursula Seller, who is Luna's absolute rock star content lead, with eight years experience with big brands like New Look and Made.com, she thoroughly understands how to relate to different audiences. Ursula has perfected how to relate to teenage girls, which trust me, is a very difficult task, navigating the correct emojis to use, Gen Z language, and she's developed the signature Luna tone of voice as the empathetic big sister, big sister that we strive to be. Ursula also delivers Luna's content strategy by managing our brilliant team of freelance medics, and she's behind the operation of one of our most popular features, Ask Luna, the anonymous Q&A function. So thank you so much, Dr. Katie and Ursula for joining us. I'm really excited. We've got some questions um, that we've prepared and then afterwards we will be opening the Q&A to the audience. So if you do have questions, please pop them in there and then we will get to them after we've um, wrapped up our panel discussion. So let's kick off with Dr. Katie. From your medical perspective and experience meeting with teens on a daily basis, what do you think are the most pressing wellbeing issues facing teens today? Uh, thanks, Jazz. So, um, gosh, I mean, it's a difficult question because there are quite a few. Um, but I think um, from my experience of being with teens in consultations, but also from you know the content of the, the questions that get asked to Luna, um, there's a real sort of lack of confidence in teenage girls um, and um, you know we see a lot of questions about you know how should they do certain things it's like they they need a sort of advice to go in the right direction I think there's a lot of conflict about how they should be behaving I mean they're getting such a wide variety of input from various different so social media platforms um, and there's a way they kind of should should be um, so yeah they there's this sense they don't quite know how to be. Um, and and then, you know, that can lead to sort of unhealthy, unhealthy relationships. Um, and a lot of the patients I see are not necessarily in situations where they're seeing healthy relationships around them. Um, so it's sort of how do they navigate um, early relationships? Um, and how can they do that when they've got all this advice that they don't know is right or wrong? Um, uh, I think there's quite uh, there's there's actually a lot around um, sexuality and coming to terms with their own sexuality, um, having those feelings from their hormones changing uh, or hormones changing their bodies, um, new feelings that they don't know how to handle um, and what to do with them uh, and if they are normal or not. And actually, that just saying that really makes me realize that's what we're we're sort of having to explain a lot of the time what the normal is and that's in the sense of things that are happening to them around their periods and the things that hormones do to them but also in the sense of how they're feeling and how they're managing relationships but I think above all you know what I find is there's a lot of um uh, sort of contemplation about these issues um and I see that coming out in physical symptoms so, you know, patients get referred to me with headaches, stomach aches, um, uh, you know, various physical symptoms, but actually often talking through things, you realize it, it's, it's not a medical problem. This is all this other stuff behind stressing them, um, causing them to have physical symptoms. 
No, that's super insightful. And yeah, I think we see a lot around lack of confidence. Obviously, sexuality is something we get asked a lot about. And also the fear of failure point as well, I think is um, definitely comes through a lot in the questions that we see. Um, so I guess, Ursula, from your perspective, you are obviously uh, seeing what questions come through, building content of the back of this. Um, do you see similar trends coming through on Luna? Or are you seeing anything different to what Dr. Katie is seeing face to face and in real life? So yeah, it's um massively echoed, like both in terms of like all the content they're actually engaging with in our in our learn section of the app, the polls they're voting and what they're saying, and of course the anonymous like questions QA feature that we have. Um yeah, I really I think Katie made a really good point there, which is often they just want like the answer of what's normal and often they want us to tell us exactly what to do and they want the direction to do what's right and often you know what's right for one person to do is very different for another and a lot of what we do is having to normalize that for them um with regard to shame i think that's a really good point a lot of the questions we are often asked have a layer of shame um attached to them or self-consciousness and um, they'll they'll kind of caveat everything with sorry if this is weird or i'm embarrassed to ask but um so we have to have to spend a lot of time reassuring them and actually even um goes further than that we actually pulled our community about um uh, embarrassment and shame and actually that's that's the number one reason why they wouldn't want to go and see a doctor which is something that we really need to dig into you know when they need to seek support like that shouldn't hold them back um as for unhealthy relationships yeah I mean relationship questions as Jazz mentioned in the introduction there they make up a huge portion of the questions we get asked um and you know it could range from anything being treated coldly by friends just being kicked out of a friendship group for no reason which I've spoken to a lot of parents about and their own teens have gone through that and um, being afraid or unsure about how to connect with people and actually conduct themselves socially, um, comparing themselves to friends and even not knowing how to like explain something to a parent. We actually get a lot of questions from teens asking like, I've just, I've started my first period and I, I don't know how to tell my mum. And even the non-relationship questions we get often like, you know, around let's say female health or periods often surround um, or have kind of relationships tied into that so they might be worried because a friend has told them something that their body might do when they grow up um and actually come to us to ask if it's actually true um or they feel really left out of the period club you know even though they're, they're just 11 and they haven't started yet and you know they feel like there's something really wrong with them so yeah I, I know that sometimes these questions might seem like superficial to some um and even they say often when they ask us like I know that people have bigger problems but actually like it's really important that we do validate like their struggles and that's a, such a huge part as Katie said like if this does come out in like physical symptoms and they're actually going to the doctors because of it what can we do to actually prevent them having to do that in the first place and help them kind of develop their confidence in those areas in the first place yeah definitely and empowering them to have those conversations like you said um with doctors and knowing that doctors aren't scary and that they are here to help um I think yeah is, is a huge part like you said so I guess, Dr. Katie, based on your work as a paediatrician, um, do these well-being issues come as a surprise to you? No, not at all. I think, you know, adolescent years are years when it's always difficult. Um, there's so much going on. There's that sort of uh, not only the, the physical changes of puberty, but there's uh, the unknown. Um, you know, they don't really know where they'll be in a couple of years. They've got to do public exams. They've got the stress of that. Um, they are starting to form relationships and, and navigate that. So there's so much stress on them already. And I think now in this age, it is even harder having come out of a pandemic and the effect that the pandemic has had on them. And then faced with this sort of quagmire of social media, um, not knowing what is right, what is wrong. Um, and it, it sort of gets sucked into it. Um, and I think it it can really, as I said before, they that, that sort of ruminating on certain things um, and not being able to, or, or sort of obsessing over it, not being able to remove themselves from it. Um, and we see it, you know, things go viral and then that really, that creates problems. So they've got fear of that, you know, how how's that going to impact them? Are they going to be caught in that? Um, so I think an already stressful time has been made even more stressful. Um, and it really is up to us, um, you know, as 
people who are interested in young people and have responsibility to be able to help them navigate that in some way. And that's when I think actually, you know, Luna does a brilliant job at that. Um, I think one of the difficulties and, and uh, as I alluded to this is that sort of opening up conversations um, and that, you know, fear of going to medical professionals. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where that comes from, um, but we need to really help with that. I, I mean, I think it's been there for years and I think, you know, there is a, that sort of uh, power um, thing of do doctors, health professionals sort of being more difficult to approach, but th that's wrong now <laughs> and we know that and there are ways that we can break that down. And one of the great things about Luna is we're giving them information of how to do that. So how to open those conversations, how to actually go to the right people and telling them what those people, be it the GP or sexual health centre, what, what, that they're very used to dealing with these things because they are very common. Um, so it's about sort of breaking down barriers um, and, and making uh, access more easy um, and easily available. So no, no surprise about these issues and it, we really need to tackle it now because it's only going to get worse. Yeah, definitely. And I think you touched on this um, a little bit, uh, Katie, in terms of, you know, healthcare providers doing more in terms of supporting teenagers, parents, apps. Um, but first, of all, I'll come to you first and then see, Katie, if you've got anything else you want to add. But I mean, what role do you think specifically do parents, guardians, educators, apps um, truly play in supporting teenagers' well-being. So maybe ask the first, then Katie, if you want to build um, based on your previous point, I can go over to you afterwards. Yeah, we've, we've actually asked our community a lot about this as well and just kind of got their perspective on it all. Um, I mean, with regard to educators, for example, like we know that there's PSHE efforts um, there, but teens just don't seem to see school at the moment as, as a go-to for that kind of support. Um, we actually asked them recently, I think it was about, over 3,500 teens, we just asked them like, what, what is really stressing you out? What's really worrying you? And school stress was their number one reason. Um, and despite this, when we asked them like, where do you go then to get support for this? 44% of them turned to friends to solve this problem. Only 4% of them said they would actually turn to a school counselor and 3% a teacher. Um, I think this is just this particularly worrying, right? We, we actually have people who are really best placed and well-trained to support. And that's not to say that teens shouldn't have Friends, you know, on a shoulder to cry. I think that part of that comfort system is really important. But they also need somewhere to turn that offers like practical and um, manageable solutions for them, not just um, a kind of reassuring pat on the shoulder. And I think another thing to say is, as we kind of touched on earlier, that comparison culture. If teens are constantly turning, for example, about school stress to their friends, <clears throat> what might work for their friend really well and get them great grades might not work very well for them. And I think it's really important to consider, actually, if they are only turning to their friends, that comparison culture is really being stirred up there. They really need to feel like they can turn to someone. And if they aren't turning to school professionals all the time, how can, like, actually um, we better support them in that and, and open up those conversations? Um, and I think something like, I mean, obviously Luna would be the obvious one, but something there that actually helps them, like, we resource teams, basically, to self-manage these problems and give them actually expert verified advice not just advice from their friends or from social media yeah i mean i agree and uh, for me sort of within the hospital environment um or outpatient clinic um sort of set up we often see teenagers where we are having to impart a lot of education in a very short space of time so if we're seeing somebody for heavy painful periods there's a lot of chat to do about hormones and what they do and then, um, you know, the medication and how that works. And it's not straightforward. You know, you have to start medication on a certain day and remember to take it for a certain number of days. There's a lot you're having to say. And actually, when I set up Text in the City in New York, that was based on this very situation where I would be saying so much. And then I'd sort of send these quite vulnerable teens off into the ether and where I was there, they really these were teens without um, sort of support. Um, and um, I did in those days, I gave them my, my um, mobile phone number. And I remember one weekend, it was just pinging, pinging, pinging. And it was these teenagers just sending in questions as sort of follow up after that visit. 
Um, and they were simple questions. Um, and I realized that actually, you know, they, they, they had a thirst for knowledge. They wanted to know more, which was brilliant, but they didn't know how to get that other than to, to text me because they had this one sort of line into that, that uh, medical situation. So that's that initiated setting it up properly um, with proper governance around it. But I, you know, the same goes now where I am in the situation and for my colleagues working similarly, that we have 15 minutes with a patient um, and we have to say so much. And in that 15 minutes, I often see the, the teenager on their own uh, without their parent and with their parent. And you know, even that shuffling around, getting one out the door to the other in takes up a couple of minutes. So you have a very short period of time. And I can see that that information, some of it has gone in, some of it hasn't. There are lots of questions and I'm nervous sending them out, not without them having something that they can turn to, to get more information. And if they have more questions that they can ask. So, you know, for me, having an app like this is, is it feels so right. It feels really important. Um, you know, I think any uh, connection I have with a teenager in the hospital environment is a real opportunity to impart some health education. And we try and do that when we take a social history, for example, we try and make that conversation about healthy living or you know, uh, how to empower them to manage their own health care during their adolescent years. Now having a tool like Luna, you know, that we can we can use that um, to their advantage. And it's like, you know, it, it's an adjunct to their, their medical care. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Katie, and obviously thank you for yeah having our back and promoting us to your um to to the people you see as well. Um, so yeah, moving on to something slightly different. Um, social media is often cited as a significant contributor to to mental health challenges, especially amongst teenagers. Um. Uh, so this one's for you. How does Luna approach this issue and how have you been managing any questions that come in about social media more generally? Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. I mean, I, personally, I 100% agree with this. And there's so many studies to, that speak to this, right? And so much more we need to do in this area. Um, what's actually super interesting is that the teens themselves, when we, when we spoke to them about it, don't 100% kind of recognise the impacts that social media is having on them in the moment. And often... Um, you know, they're coming to us with questions that they're asking afterwards, um, which kind of often are the after effects of, of spending a lot of time on social media and they might not quite realise what's going on there. So, for example, they might watch a ton of videos about weight loss and then come to Luna and ask about like the fastest way they can lose um, loads of weight in two days um, and because they've seen someone on social media did it. And I think it's really important that we kind of help educate them on like the actual underlying impacts of what, what social media is actually doing to them so yeah I mean what what how does Luna actually approach this issue um go back to your question Jazz it, we're basically as I think Jazz also mentioned in the introduction we're not another social media site I think we've got more than enough of those as it is um, and that's not what Luna's about we are a totally closed community which means that they can't speak to each other and there aren't any comments that they can see from each other now I do understand that uh seeing comments can often be funny and uplifting and make you feel like less alone but then also especially when it comes to kind of medical advice that we're giving actually with these kind of comments that are often anecdotal and can actually be quite harmful. They can be misleading they can be provided without any context. So, um, for example, if someone's on a particular diet because a doctor's recommended it due to an underlying health condition, you know, they might not have given all that information and someone's learning the wrong, the wrong things, essentially. Um, and simply a lot of comments can be a lie, right, and then lead them down the wrong path. So, um, that's why we're a closed community. Um, we also offer entirely appropriate information for teens. Um, and Dr. Katie's been amazing at supporting us kind of growing this library. Um, in On social media, if they actually search up a lot of the content or the art, the questions that they have, um, they can be faced with some pretty extreme stuff. And actually, we want to make sure they can access that information in the right and the appropriate way for them. We even offer content warnings, especially if they're searching up something that's risky, obviously. Um, in the app that we want to make sure they're signposted to the right places to get personalised support if they need. Um, also on the app, and, and quite importantly, we actually tap into these social media trends. So we're not saying that we're just saying, like, don't want to engage with social media at all. Like, we're very aware that they're spending a lot of time there. It's, it's actually their, their playground in a lot of ways. Um, but it's really important that we're quite reactive to these trends. Like, if legging legs comes up and they're all trying to achieve it, which is essentially a new version of the thigh gap trend, which I think a lot of us probably grew up with, 
Um, it's really important that we actually clear that up and give them the facts very quickly so they are well versed in what's going on there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we also, again, like in the way that we rely on social media to create a lot of this um, content to debunk, we also have to kind of try and offer a bit of a social media like edge in our tone of voice and our and our, the, our way of speaking to teams. We want to make sure that we're actually engaging them because ultimately they will just go back to social media for this advice. So that's a really big part of what we do um, in the app. Um, and that's how we kind of try and combat them spending far too much time on it. So we, we basically are trying to be like a realistic alternative, right, to social media and learning from that. We're, we're a guide to growing up that they actually want to learn from. Um, I, many of us might have grown up and had a, a book of a book about puberty kind of chucked our way and said like this is puberty and now you know everything about it but really puberty is like ongoing right and you know I'm not a, a doctor I'm speaking to just the questions we've even seen through like they're all going through such different things how could you possibly address every single last detail of that and also react to all the things that you're seeing kind of popping up and trends all you know in just a physical book or um, curriculum so that's what Luna's all about it's actually very much keeping our finger on the pulse as much as anything else um and being as Jazz said actually very well at the beginning a, a real antidote to social media yeah definitely definitely and I guess Katie as a medical professional how do you see technology and digital platforms really working with healthcare services for teenagers obviously you mentioned you have 15 minutes to see someone you know where do you signpost them to? I know you mentioned Luna, but there are there any other resources for parents, um, teachers that you do recommend um, young people or even parents themselves go to and, and, and look at afterwards? Yeah, I mean, I do. Um, I have various ones related to, you know, specific things they're coming in with. Um, you know, we've had a lot uh, of, of young people with tics. Um, so, you know, I, I have certain sort of go-to websites that I will give um, or direct signpost um, parents and, and young people too. I, I think for me, the main thing is knowing that it's accurate and validated information. And I think, you know, again, at Luna, we're, we're really uh, very, you know, we're on that. Um, there's nothing we're going to say that isn't true from a medical perspective. And if we, uh, we are not diagnostic, so we are not going to try and solve the medical problems, but we signpost to the right people. And that, again, going back to that sort of, uh, uh, helping that young person sort of navigate the system, how they start the conversation and how they get to where they need to go to. Um, so I think that's that that's how we should be using these these digital platforms, because at the end of the day, uh, you can't they're not going to replace real people. Um, and there are certain things that uh, teenagers need to see the real people for so so a lot of it as i said is really about helping them with that journey to get to the place they need to be um, and dispelling the myths that are out there um so all this this inaccurate information which i think is very hard for parents actually because sometimes they are you know i'm a parent of, of teenagers and yeah even i, I sort of if they show me something i'm a bit like oh you know, is, is that really true on some of that, you know, and, and of course, you know, often it's not, but it's very confusing for everybody. Um, so being able to go to one place or certain places where you get accurate, proper information, I think is absolutely vital. Yeah, no, completely. Um, oh, I would say to everyone, um, please feel free to obviously drop questions into the comments. Um, we're really lucky to have Dr. Katie with us. Um, so please do feed them through. Um, but I would like to move on to asking Ursula a question around the wellbeing challenge. Um, we had an amazing uptake um, with 7,000 teens across um, the country doing this. Um, why do you think it was such an effective intervention, despite it only being four weeks long and actually just such a small part of Luna, um, Luna's offering more generally? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, I, I think... Yeah, I mean, to recap, actually, for anyone um, from what Jazz said at the beginning, the wellbeing challenge was essentially a four week long challenge that we encourage teams to, to basically address these four key areas and core areas that we see as kind of making up their wellbeing. So um, sleep, body image, mental health and exercise. Um, we really wanted to kind of ask the question, right, is like, could we make a meaningful impact in their lives in just four weeks? And what does that prove out about the fact that Luna really deserves a place in, in the lives of all these teens? Um, 
So, um, yeah, spoiler alert, I really did have a meaningful impact. But basically, um, yeah, I think why it, why it was so impactful, really, it, it, we made learning, like, fun. So there's there's a few different ways we did it. Um, we used all the kind of different areas of the lunar service to, to really help um, them work through these um, different weeks in the challenges, these different core areas. So we normalized their struggles by actually throwing up like questions that other people had asked in the past um, and showing them like actually you've been, you might be going through this, but other people have been through it before, which is a really big part, right, of that comparison culture and them kind of coming to us with questions saying like, I'm probably only one feeling like this, someone really weird. Um, we also educated teams using like Luna's Learn content. We curated specifically like and tailored content that would help them really focus in on those areas. Um, and these were all again creators. As I mentioned when we were discussing social media, these are all created like very bite sized, very engaging to actually make sure they enjoy the learning process as much as anything else. And it feels like a real like challenge they can get like sink their teeth into. Um, we also actually reinforce these learnings like with practical tasks they could do um like i suppose we set them homework but for them it, it felt fun we had uh, one was like a, a meditation and breath work expert who actually created an amazing guided meditation video for us to help them um really sit and kind of focus on their well-being um and finally really importantly actually we actually gamified that learning process like teams are spending a lot of time on I'm going to get all the names wrong, like Roblox and Minecraft and things like that. They like, enjoy gaming, you know, and learning through gaming. So we um, we made the, the whole process of changing up their habits like fun, I guess. We rewarded them. We kept incentivizing them. We had even just like fun graphics popping up on the screen. And all that process felt like much more rewarding for them um, rather than promising like quick hacks and magic fixes. That I know social media promises like, you know, we, we acknowledge we level with them like well-being is work to a point but actually like we can handhold you through this and help you build healthier habits over that time um and you know it was really impactful I know Jazz called out those stats earlier like I just it's it's incredible that going into it what 58 was it percent of teens um felt neutral or worse about their mental health and coming out 84 percent said it was going well or thriving and that's just in four weeks so yeah I think that's that's pretty significant and that's hopefully how we did it yeah we made learning fun Definitely. And I think knowing that lots of other teenagers around you were doing this challenge as well, um, that sort of collective thinking and doing also like really helps. Um, so yeah, no, it was brilliant. And I think lots more, lots more to come there. Um, a question to you, um, Katie, and then I can see there's some questions popping up in the chat, which is great. Um, what advice would you give to parents and educators to help them support um, teens, both at home and in school settings? Like, what tangible, practical advice? Mm. Um, well, gosh. So, I mean, uh, sort of stating the obvious, but sort of listening, um, because I think that uh we're quite quick as parents um particularly to sort of act, jump in um and think that's probably the right thing to do to make them feel a bit better but actually a lot of it is is just sitting back and listening but as we said earlier sometimes it's hard to initiate those conversations um and to so again sort of talking about social media and what what your teenager is looking at and what they're you know what they're getting from the social media that they're using so actually having something tangible that you can talk about and then you can enter in to perhaps the difficulties that they're struggling with um so i think you know a lot of it is about uh, it sounds easy to sort of initiating the conversations but it's not often um and it's so dependent on what your that teenager is like and what situation they're currently in um, and when teenagers are in a really bad place they're not easy to talk to um, so sort of openness non-judgmental listening um, and, and trying to have a bit of a hook that you can start these conversations on. Do you have any suggested hooks Dr Katie as you said as a mother of teenagers what have you used in the past that you think <laughs> works or anyone in the chat who's got a suggestion for other parents please feel free to put them in here. I mean, I think we've all heard it really, that sort of going for a walk in the car, you know, where you're not actually having to um, uh, look at each other. <laughs> I think that's a very obvious one that, that's, um, you know, well known about. Um, and just, I think, not getting too intense about it all. I mean, it's really, it, it's the most sort of devastating, horrible feeling when you know your teenager is struggling with something. 
but remembering that actually it is very it's it is part of being a normal teenager i mean obviously there are extremes and when teenagers aren't well from a mental health perspective then that's a different matter but for normal sort of you know uh teenage life there will be ups and downs and that is just what it's like and not and just letting letting some things go it's okay to let some things go um you have to um but no but then knowing that you are there for them and you always will be and if you're not the right person as a parent then then someone else you know actually give handing it over to somebody you can trust who actually you think that young person may have a better connection with so yeah i mean it's 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 it's, it's never going to be easy but also you know Teenage years are fantastic years and years to be celebrated. And I think so often, you know, there's a real sort of negativity around teenagers. Um, and I think uh, so that's another sort of block for teenagers, just knowing that adults just think they're all, you know, not great. So um, trying to not see it like that, you know, we can learn a lot from them. They're absolutely great. I mean, it's a fascinating time of development and just sort of soaking that up and not focusing on the negativity. Yeah, definitely. Um, Ursula, I know you're um, not a mother, but obviously you're definitely taking the role of um, older big sister. So is there anything above and beyond what Dr. Katie said in terms of advice to parents and educators and then we've got some great questions I'll move on to from um, from the chat. Uh, so, I mean, as, as Katie, I think, touched on as well, like every every teen is different and everyone has individual needs, like to a point you'll know your teen the best. So I'm not going to sit in here and like tell you how to parent or be a caregiver to, to your specific teen. But, um, you know, I did turn to the community for this, if that would help. Um, and I actually, yeah, I asked them kind of firstly, like, how would you most like to be supported? Um, and this really varied from like, you know, they could say like, I want like practical advice and solutions from, from my parents. I want them to actually do something for me. And actually all they wanted was was to be listened to and, and for a parent or a caregiver to be empathetic without judgment, which is exactly what Katie says. So that's really um, great to hear. So, you know, I know it's less like action or you can't really tick the offers easily, but it really is just about listening to them. And Similarly, then, when we ask them, like, how then would you like want those lines of communication open in the first place? They said that they'd really love it if, if uh, they were just approaching someone and said, like, look, I don't judge who you are as a person or your choices, but I just want to know what's going on. Obviously, as Katie said, like, don't make it too deep a conversation. It like straight off the bat. But I think that's a really good point is go into it and make sure they're aware that you're not going to judge who they are, what they're about to share with you. That's not to say you need to celebrate every decision that they make. Um, but, you know, at least if they feel comfortable to share with you something that they're going through without judgment, then you can help prevent them for education or um, take them somewhere where someone can um, help prevent something. And I think that's something a, a lot of the time we discuss, um, Jazz and Dr. Katie, actually, we've all discussed this, is that kind of prevention through education piece that we're really trying to do here, which is like knowledge is power and the right kind of knowledge. And actually, this this is um, really how we how we want to help teams. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Exactly. Knowledge really is power. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with Luna. So we've had some um, great questions come through um, on the chat. I'll kick off with the first one, which is from Leah. How did you incentivize the healthy habits and measure whether they were participating, um, guessing through the well-being challenge? Um, I can quickly kick off with a response to that one. And then Ursula, please feel free to reinforce as I know you ran a lot of this. Um, but we do a couple of things to help incentivize teenagers and, and we really did do this throughout the wellbeing challenge. Um, the first is lunar points. So every time you read an article, you track, you ask a question, you do great things that help you be more educated, empowered, you get lunar points, um, which don't actually equal much, um, but they do make you move up the ranks into whether you are a bronze, silver or gold status member and um yeah teenagers have really enjoyed racking these points up and so um the first is really by re rewarding healthy habits and good behaviors um some of the challenges also required proof so you had to read the article um answer a question and if you got it right um or you actually did the action the app would log whether you did it and you could only move forward on to the next challenge if you actually did that um, we use a lot of notifications to prompt um, people as well. We know that when someone does something, is it how many times is it Ursula you do something to film to, to do a habit? I can't remember. I'm get it wrong. 
And in case is it 33 repeated actions or 66 repeated actions? Something, something like that. But that was all incorporated into the strategy. So that's how we really incentivize people. And then in terms of measuring it, we did it through um, qualitative feedback. So um, feedback and also um, quantitative stuff. So surveys, analyzing emotions log, analyzing what they were doing. Um, and that's how we got the report together, which you can actually find on our website, which is at weareluna.app. There's a full report with all the stats there. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Leah, for a great question. Don't know, Ursula, if you want to add anything to that. Otherwise, I will move to the next question. The only, uh, the only thing I was going to add, I think that was, that was good, but like they, they want to feel good and they want to feel happy. And I think that, that actually, like we can't discount the fact that teens, um, I know a lot of the time kind of like portray as like, sad and a lot of the stock images really um, are annoying for this, but really like they want to feel better and they want to feel happy and they want to try something out. And I think that that is that was a big incentive for a lot of them, like the feedback that should be got at the end, where they really just enjoyed the process of like trying new things and learning new ways to kind of self-manage um, their kind of well-being. And so, yeah, we, we can throw kind of points and things at them, but it was really great to see actually they were engaging with it because it helped them. So, yeah. That's great. Um, okay, so we've had a question in from Sarah, which I think is one for Katie, and she has said, I appreciate this is possibly too complex a question, but my daughter sometimes doesn't feel she can um, speak to the school support or GP, um, and I'm worried how, about how she directs any stress. How can I optimise my parenting approach to her? My IT knowledge is a bit poor. Um, do you have any recommendations or any thoughts um, for Sarah, who's opened up to us um, on the webinar? Yeah, thanks. I mean, you're not alone in having that feeling, I think. Um, so, and, and it's difficult. And again, I think it goes back to what we were saying earlier. I mean, it's about her knowing that you're there for her and giving her those opportunities to be able to open up so without forcing it. So that's quite difficult. But, you know, find so those, those moments, I don't know, um, everyone's in different situations, but if you are going to walk to... I don't know, supermarkets or whatever, if you're doing something, saying, do you want to come with me? Don't have to come with me. To, to, not forcing it, but just making the most of any opportunities where you see she could want to walk with you and then may talk to you. Um, you know, what you said, if she, if she really doesn't want to go and speak to anyone, you're not going to be able to force her to do that. Um, the other thing is thinking about anyone else in the family or, you know, trusted friends or relatives who might be able to allow her to open up um, and that always surprises me a little bit um, that people you don't necessarily think would be the right people are the right people so thinking about you know the wider family and friends um, who might be able to take that role um, yeah I mean just sort of going with it for the moment because um, as long as she's not at harm um, you've got to sort of trust your instincts um, and just just uh, as I said sort of letting her know that you are there or other people are there for her so I don't know if that's helpful I mean it's it's obviously different for different people and these situations can be much more complex so not easy to answer in this sort of setting but um, that would be my sort of general advice yeah no that sounds great I'm sure Sarah um hopefully that's helpful for you and some tangible tips there um obviously you can also give her the link to luna to download as well there's an anonym, anonymous space to ask questions and um sometimes a bit of seeing what other people ask might help open a conversation up between you two totally yeah and just just coming in there sort of saying that too you know that might be something that you do use as that sort of hook so saying you know i know you're finding it hard to speak to the gp or the school counselor but you know i heard about this app and and you can ask these questions and and you know they, they might be able to help you think about the conversation you could have with a gp so it's not replacing that she might need to see a professional but it's actually giving her the tools to be able to do it definitely yeah and encouraging those conversations um, so Jill has asked whether we'll be doing a webinar targeted to teens also. Um, I have two daughters. I'd like to show this too. Um, I think that's a great question. This is our first webinar actually, and it's great to see, um, engagement from parents, guardians, and everyone else has joined. Um, we could definitely consider doing a webinar targeted to teens, but what I would say is, um, that's exactly why Luna as an app exists. They can ask questions and get information um, confidentially, confidentially. Um, so what I would say, Jill, is please definitely um, check out the link to download it, share it with your daughters, and they can have access to confidential information.
from medical professionals. But if a webinar is what the teens want, then for sure, we can definitely, definitely look at it. Um, we have a question in from Debbie. I think this one is for you, Dr. Katie. Um, my daughter can sometimes appear distant and frustrated with me. Are there any tips on ways to help reconnect? Thank you. Well, um, well, it's incredibly common. I think most of us parents of particular, well, to any teenager, girls or boys, um, will have those moments when they just seem so far away and it all seems just too difficult. So really pretty much what I said in response to Sarah's question is it is, uh, you know, letting them know you're there, um, thinking of things you can do that aren't going to force the situation. Um, and knowing, I think, for yourself that this is a phase and it will pass. Um, that's the other thing um, that you know, you are not alone. And uh, if you can find other parents, you know, you've got if you've got friends of teenagers who are going through the same thing, that's very comforting as a parent um, because you don't always have to do something. Um, and sometimes it's best not to. I think, you know, we like to fix. Um, we like to find a solution. But, you know, teenage years and, and, and all that comes with it are not always all the problems there or the stresses that they're having. They don't always need a fix. They just need to navigate their own way through it. Hopefully that one's helped there. Um, we've had a couple of questions and a piece of feedback um, uh, around um, potentially an app for boys or whether Luna is um, inclusive for boys. Could you please recommend a similar app for, for, for teenage boys? I don't know. Um, Ursula, if you want to speak to this, obviously in terms of uh, content um, and our, our views there. Um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts there? Well, yeah, I mean, we've actually had questions in from boys present on the app. And, you know, we, we have people of all pronouns on the app. That's, you know, this is a very inclusive generation, so we can't speak to the, the gender side at birth, but we certainly do get questions from boys. And I think, yes, it, there is a lot of period geared content and, and female health geared content in the app, but there's also plenty to support on like healthy relationships, which we know is such a big part of growing up, dealing with mixed signals, toxic friendships, how to manage stress, like, it's so very holistic. Luna is open for everyone. I, you know, I think that's that's even that when the app was being built, it was part of the branding decisions, right? We're not this kind of like super girly, like pink app. We want everyone to feel like Luna can offer something for them. Um, obviously a tiny team. So we do just have Luna and not Luno, but um, there's nothing stopping boys from downloading this app as well and asking questions and engaging with content that they find interesting. You can also tailor um, the categories you're interested in and engage with the collections in the app that you're interested in and, and teens can choose what they want to look at um, and what suits them best. So if periods and hormones aren't what they're interested in, that, that's fine. But, you know, as all that being said, I do think even those signed male at birth should be learning about periods and hormones um, from an early age. So, yeah, there's nothing stopping them from joining the app. Yeah, and I think just to build on that, um, you know, someone's asked, is there something similar out there for boys? As Ursula said, everybody is welcome on Luna, but yes, there is definitely content, you know, on there for people with periods. The branding is definitely more geared towards this. In our experience, we haven't seen anything else out there for girls or for boys. And for us, this is just a huge opportunity to, to build a product that does deliver something for, for teenagers, however they identify. But we are an extremely small team at the moment. Um, and so we've decided to focus um, on the first, first cohort for Luna, which is people with periods. But you know, if things go well, then there is nothing stopping us with building a Luno and taking this um, even further than where we are now. Um, one final question, which I think is for you, Ursula, and then um, we will wrap up. Um, how does Luna ensure the articles or content is age appropriate? Um, how do you see ages um, across the app and ensure that people are getting the right information that they need? Yeah, this is a really tricky one. I mean, it's, it's a really interesting question. Like every teenager, and I'm sure Dr. Katie could speak to this as well, like goes through things at such different ages and such different stages. We, therefore, for that reason, kind of, see our content as being accessible by ages when it's when it's time for them. Um, so yeah, we do provide content warnings for things, like even if we're discussing something that might be triggering around like healthy weight, like we wanna make sure that they're comfortable accessing that when they're ready. Um, and we also make sure to recommend the right kind of pieces, but generally the content on the app anyway is appropriate for age at all ages. Like there will be very foundational content that might be of more interest to someone who's 11, right? When, when can they expect their first period? Like 
very foundational stuff. What is puberty? What is discharge? All of that stuff. Um, whereas actually when you're um, uh, an older user, we do have users of all ages on the app. There's much more like detailed deep dives that they might be more interested in what is a healthy relationship right how do i navigate like having a partner and, and all those kind of complicated feelings and so none of it is like inappropriate it's just that some will be of interest to someone who's older and going through different experiences and some who are younger and we do see that we see um different ages tapping into stuff at the right time for them and you know it's worth saying as well like yes social media there's a minimum age limit right 13 but there will be people who are using social media who are much younger than my age who are still engaging with these harmful trends so to be honest like it's really important that actually they can access that information to debunk something that could be pretty harmful for them later in life and um, so it's really good to arm them with the content whether or not for example they've started their periods yet they need to know when the time comes that drinking lime juice will not delay their period for example so um yeah to, to kind of hopefully that's answered the question basically we we don't like stop anyone from looking at things and we trust that you know, it is in line with the curriculum and, and PSHE teachings, and we just build on that, really. Dr. So, Katie, do you want to jump in and add anything there? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, and actually rem remembering that if they're accessing Luna, they will be able to access most of the World Wide Web and be getting all kinds of information. But I would say, you know, we're very considered in how we answer them. So, so any question that might be a sensitive question where you know we might be worried about the age and how we respond there's a lot of thought that goes into it it's not just a sort of stock answer that's sent out or that you know one person just responding that question will be looked at by several people including myself um, to make sure that you know we've thought about the safeguarding issues that might be around it um, and so you know we're giving the right information and just you know it is very very considered and thought through yeah, definitely. A lot of time and thought um, goes into, yeah, like you said, crafting every single response. Thank you so much. Great. So um, obviously we're coming up to the end of the session. Um, and just before we leave, I just want to wrap up with three takeaways. Um, the first one is, as mentioned at the start of this webinar, we really have a direct line into the mind of Jens Alpha. And we know that parents, guardians, schools all have a huge role to play in supporting them. So we want to be sharing more of our insights with you through the form of reports and more webinars as, re as requested today. Tomorrow we release our next report, which is all about teen stress, what's causing stress and what we as caregivers can do to support them. We actually did a little bit of research ourselves and we actually couldn't see much out there in terms of reports, insights and information. So we're really hoping to plug a knowledge gap here that many might have. So please take a read of the stress report, which we will share with you as a follow up to this webinar. And we'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts on this. Second to this, if you are a parent or guardian who is interested in sharing Luna with your teen, then to those on this call today, we are offering our premium service which usually costs $29.99 a year for half the price at $14.99. This means unlimited access to Luna, so all the content your teens want to access, as many questions as your teen wants to ask, endless access to quizzes and challenges, all for the cost of less than a cup of coffee or McFlurry a month. Luna really is that tool that opens conversations with parents and guardians, it helps teens man manage any anxiety around growing up. And of course, it helps them realize that they are normal and that they are not the only one thinking this. So you can scan this QR code to take advantage of this now. This will also be emailed to you if you want some time to think about it. Um, but this offer will last until midnight on Sunday. And then lastly, the third takeaway, we would love to keep the conversation going to understand more about how we can build the best products for teens, parents, caregivers and schools. So if you are a school or a relevant organisation who might want to discuss a collaboration or purchasing subscriptions as a provision for your students, or if you're a senior leader or wellbeing lead who's interested in um, Luna as a provision for parents with teens, or if you're just a parent with an opinion to share, then I would genuinely love the chance to speak with you. So please feel free to scan the QR code to set up some time with me over the next few weeks. Or again, I will send um, an email with a personal link where you can book time directly. It's only with the help of you all that we can continue to create an amazing app like Luna. So thank you all so much for your support. 
So I think you've had enough from me and I will leave you all with a very short video of some of the Luna community talking about how they found using Luna. Thank you all so much for your time. Feel free to connect. And if you've enjoyed the webinar, then please, of course, spread the word. Thank you very much. Luna, genuinely, I'm so glad that it exists. Well, I went through like the whole puberty stage without a mum. So Luna has been really happy to help me find a community and like get my questions answered correctly. It's not some sort of, I don't know, bot who's just yep. giving out just facts and statistics. It's not about that. It's about like connecting with the people. My favourite part is probably the anonymous questions. It makes it less awkward to talk to like actual about it. it feels good to know that you're not the only one asking yeah. like questions you're not the only one who doesn't know like you know about yourself that well don't resort to like social media don't resort to like, tiktok to yeah. answer your questions because it's it's just not healthy it doesn't take much to download it yeah. but it can get so much in return yeah. it's just you and an app like, you don't have to like you know like think about talking to anyone in real life obviously great advice you can track your peers you can track, like anything you can ask questions anonymously i think it's Great. Thank you all so much. We're really excited about the next few months, years ahead, and hopefully more webinars to come. Thank you and have a good evening.